Welcome to another update from Elixir's voyage around the world. We've just arrived in Chiapas in Mexico after a tough 550 mile sail from Costa Rica. After a few days of ghosting along in light winds, we were caught out by an intense tropical storm. We've had a few scary moments on this voyage, but lightning tops them all, and we spent a few terrifying nights watching the sky strike the sea all around us. After a week of sailing, we made it to Mexico, and it was a relief to be in the safety of land. We were excited to be able to leave Elixir tied up in Marina Chiapas and set off on some inland adventures. Mexico Mexico is an amazingly warm and colourful country and we were instantly welcomed by some of the friendliest people we've met in Latin America. After a few weeks of exploring the states of Chiapas and Oaxaca, we packed up elixir for hurricane season before I found myself in one of the sketchiest travel situations so far. We have arrived in Chiapas in Mexico. This is where elixir is going to stay for the hurricane season. The first hurricane has already arrived and we actually sailed through it on the way up here. Although it wasn't a hurricane when we sailed through it, it was just like a low pressure system. Sailing up through Central America was a bit difficult. We had to deal with like a lot of rain squalls, a lot of lightning and thunder and a lot of a lot of periods of no wind, so like a lot of motoring. The next week's just gonna be spent like packing Elixir up, getting things ready. She's gonna be lifted out into the boatyard and then everyone's going their separate ways. I'm going back to the UK, Lila's sailing across the Pacific. End of the season. Kiladi it's your last evening on board. What are you up to? Well, I gotta do my cruise duty. I'm getting a tattoo from Max. <laughs> nice, what are you getting? Um, I'm gonna get contenta, which is the Spanish word for like content, designed by Max. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Wow, look at that. I feel very self conscious about my feet. Look at those bunions. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, have you ever seen bunions like that before? <laughs> Two tattoos in one day. What are you getting? Um, an elixir tattoo, elixir of life. Elixir special. Yeah, with a with a nice sun. Me llamo Ronnie Alessandro Rodríguez. ¿Cómo está la vida acá en Chiapas? Un poco económicamente, un poco dura. Aquí pues trabajamos 24 horas y descansamos 24. Entonces en las 24 horas que descansamos nos dan o la oportunidad de, la, de lavar cubiertas, lavar los fondos y hacer otro otro dinero extra. ¿De dónde de dónde son ustedes? Inglaterra. Inglaterra. Sí. Sí, está muy lejos. Muy lejos, sí. Inglaterra. Aquí para allá. Sí. 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 Aquí está Inglaterra. Sí. Sí. España está aquí. Spain. Sí. Inglaterra está para arriba. Y Estados Unidos. Estados Unidos está acá, acá. Bueno, gracias. Bueno. Sí, gracias. Gracias. Ok, Lili. Gracias. We've arrived in Mexico and we're in a marina, which is nice after being in an anchorage for so long. We're actually not staying on the boat tonight. We got a very, very special appointment. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that we've even got a private chauffeur for the occasion, so we're going to hop in our vehicle. I will have hold the door for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> but there isn't any. <laughs> Thank you. We're in London subway, getting to our nine to five boring job. Voila. <laughs> Here is Gabriel. 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 We are staying in an Airbnb near the marina and I'm tattooing on land for the first time in a month. It feels like nice and steady. I'm tattooing our friend Brian some swallows, it's a like traditional sailor tattoo and you can have one every 5,000 miles that you sail and we are doing 14 of them on Brian that's a lot of miles I'm really bad at math <laughs> but <laughs> I, I let you calculate <laughs> Traditional sailing, Laura says that for every swallow, for good winds and fair seas, every time that you sail 5,000 miles, you should be able to get one swallow tattoo. I'm very near the end of my circumnavigation. In fact, only 800 miles away. And 
swallows, and it's been quite a few miles, and I haven't gotten any swallows. And so I'm gonna get them all in one go. There's some parts that really sting a lot. I think there's some skin like closer to my knee, to the back of my knee that's very tender. And so every time sometimes like Lila hits one of those, it's like ah. But then sometimes it just feels like very kind of minor, and then sometimes it gets really intense. Oh, that was intense. <laughs> the big one is almost done. Is it? Wow. <laughs> She's good. It's definitely moving a lot less than you are. <laughs> when I tattoo you. <laughs> What's happening, Max? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna complete two of the swallows. You have a firmer touch. Yeah? Max has a light, light touch. Oh, that's the first time we get this in... Yeah, they, they've been saying like the opposite. Maybe it's have to hurt more, Max. <laughs> Sorry, boy. <laughs> Your face is so funny when you focus. The art of tattooing is still very new to me. Even though I had an amazing teacher, I was still making a lot of mistakes. Brian's swallows were delicate compared to anything I'd done before. I was happy with the first one and I was about to move on to the second, but I made my biggest mistake so far. Whilst working on two of the smaller swallows, I somehow managed to draw a line pretty much on the other side of his leg. It's okay, Brian. Okay, good. That's good to know. <laughs> That's not what you want to hear your tattooer say is, Oh, oops. <laughs> yeah, we'll just rub that. Yeah, when the hair comes back. We'll get the eraser out. Get the eraser out. What just happened, Max? Nothing. <laughs> Don't want to talk about it. Ready for the big reveal? I guess it'll be tomorrow, huh? Wow. Look at all the swallows. Voila, Brian. Wow, cool. Get to see it. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. The back of your leg. It was pretty good. Your beard oh, you guys did good. <laughs> you so your beard all <laughs> sticking out. <laughs> yeah, it's like right there. See that little dot there? <laughs> That's Max. <laughs> I love it though. There'll always be a little piece of Max in me. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Go! <laughs> what are you working on over there? Um, swallow for a change. It's my 16th, how do you say it? like 16? 16, yeah. Yeah, swallow this week. Yeah, that's a sailor. It will be fun. <laughs> how do you feel about your husband's first tattoo? Very exciting. Very, I feel very good about this design. Very, Leila is very talented, not just with the tattoos and the shading, but coming up with designs and stuff. My grandfather just got me into sailing. Uh, he was in the Coast Guard in the US, so he had an anchor on his forearm. And I always thought like, it'd be cool to do that if the opportunity arose. Anchor symbolizes crossing the Atlantic, which we've done twice, and we're sort of leaving the Atlantic behind and going to the Pacific. So it's time to like close that chapter, you know? It looks great. Thanks, man. Does it hurt? It hurts a little bit, yeah. Not a good feeling. Oh. Jeez, you're really good <laughs> So I've been on board for uh, something like a month and a half it's been a crazy experience honestly but yeah i loved it i understand sailing a lot better than i did before i think i've made some progress and yeah i can't wait to keep on learning keep on sailing it's been great i did tattoo a lot so i tattooed a pig on our friend Jordan, who's sailing on board Delos. Traditionally, you will get a pig and a rooster together, and it can mean a kind of like talisman to prevent your boat from shipwreck. Because back in the days, they will keep like the pigs and the roosters in wooden cage, 
that will float in case of a shipwreck and oftentimes the animals will be the only survivors so that's why sailors would get them traditionally you will get one on each feet I did many swallows like swallows are definitely the sailor infinity sign <laughs> traditionally you will get a swallow for every 5,000 miles that you've sailed and Max got a swallow too on his chest which is like the traditional placement for it he actually deserves five of them but we thought it would be funnier to have yeah tallies underneath so every time he sail another five thousand miles he can just like add a line and you know like keep on counting his swallows which is really funny in my opinion hold fast traditionally get them on your fingers like you know on the phalange how do you say phalange yeah like that you know like hold fast hold fast would mean like holding to the to the rigging like if you're going like through a storm or in case of a shipwreck or something sailors would want to like just like hold and yeah max got it because a few years ago he had like a pretty bad accident when he was like sailing the Atlantic single-handed yeah he did like hold to the boat and that actually like saved his life but yeah I guess he will like speak about it better himself sailors will get ladies or like pinups before big passage because it would be like the only like feminine representation they will see for a few months so I guess it was like to like you say jerk off to like masturbate I don't know I guess it's just like porn <laughs> but Max actually got it because it's like the the naked lady design was on one of his favorite tea so yeah he really likes tea a real English guy so yeah we did the naked tea lady okay and the last tattoo we did on Max is really stupid but really funny in my opinion though yeah i guess it's like funny to like not a lot of people but yeah let me introduce you to steven our outboard engine it's a seagull it's an engine from like the 60s he's been working on and off for the past month and a half it's like kind of the mascot you can say mascot yeah so yeah max got a steven seagull tattoo on his inner biceps to holy steven we're in oaxaca city we left elixir in the marina in chiapas and took a 14 hour coach um to get here and it's really cool it's a really nice city it feels really good to go inland and escape the sea after that last difficult passage and also just sailing up through central america has been pretty tough sailing um so yeah, it's like really nice to just like stay ashore and have a little look around and explore like a really cool city. I really like Oaxaca. It's a really artsy town, really welcoming. A lot of animation in the street. It feels like it's like really artsy. There is a lot of woodcut printing on the walls. Uh, all the houses are super colorful. There is, yeah, music and people on the streets. It's really lively. And yeah, we love it. After a few months of cruising in the Central American wet season, constantly worrying about being struck by lightning, it felt amazing to leave Elixir in the safety of a marina and sleep in a real bed in some of Chiapas and Oaxaca's cultural hotspots. It was sad to say goodbye to Leila, but a few days afterwards I met up with my sister Lily. I hadn't seen her in almost two years and we had a lot of fun backpacking through the hills before heading back to the coast to meet up with another ex-Elixir crewmate. So it's 5am and we're in Selena Cruz in Mexico. Yeah, also we're with Emily again. <laughs> we've been surfing every day since we've been in Mexico but for some reason today something's a bit off like the winds onshore and the waves aren't really that big enough it doesn't look like we're gonna go in but it is a really nice morning the sunset's epic there's a cool sand dune over there uh, yeah it's just like a nice spot to be for sunrise it's like kind of but I don't know like I feel like we drove an hour here so so you can go in? No. <laughs> I just feel bad about not going. But that one's like, okay, some of them like, like that one, that one. What's up? We're reversing a really long time on this road. 
This I mean, is Max's can... first time driving in two years. Yeah. You know those like scrapbooks that's like, like baby's first, like <laughs> poo poo, or like baby's first birthday. It's like baby's first automatic car drive. So instead of going for a surf this morning, we're gonna get our exercise by hiking up this sand dune right next to where the wave is. And we fed some of these dogs like little bits of bread and peanut butter in the car park and now I guess they're just gonna follow us all the way up to the top. It's like a different planet, I don't know. Like the edge of the known world or something. Like that, I can't wait to like walk past that. Ah. Hello. How does it feel to be back on the boat? It's nice, although it's very hot. No AC anymore. <laughs> no. Today is one of our last days, maybe even the last day on Elixir. We're just like cleaning the boat, packing up all the food, getting everything ready to be stored for three to four months. Yeah, we're just drying out the spinnaker at the moment because it's been raining so much, it was really wet and all the sails got really wet. So um, we just could take a bit of time to like dry them out and then fold them up nicely so that they're gonna be like stored properly for when we come back after hurricane season. So there's one guy we've met in the marina, Aaron, who's doing an adventure that is really impressive. I can't even get my head around it. I'm gonna take you to go and meet him because he's a really interesting guy. People have been calling me Adventure Aaron for uh, 10 years now since I got sick with cancer and started doing adventures. Gave up my nine to five. Currently the expedition is like the longest one I've ever done. And it's a rowboat, ocean rowboat from the UK uh, where the best guys are obviously uh, but I've got no experience I've been YouTube and a lot of it and guys like Max are helping me but yeah man I'm gonna take this thing around the world I got a route and for the next four years I'm gonna circumnavigate I believe the boats can do it no one's done it yet they've crossed one or two oceans but nobody's ever continued on I don't know why I mean if you got one why not keep going so I got a route that doesn't require any land transfers. I just completed the first ocean road down the coast of Mexico. No one has done that. But if you come from the States, you can't row back to the States. It's just not possible to circumnavigate. So I'm heading down to Panama, learning as I go, getting the boat ready and about ready to go across the uh, first ocean. Probably at the end of December, I'll leave Panama and then catch those trade winds in January. When you do an expedition like this long, it, it takes a lot of money, really, and uh, preparation and sponsorships. And most of the people I called when I got started uh, were just like, that's the craziest thing. Let us know once you get going. So now I'm hitting them up and really focusing on sponsorship as I continue on the Costa Rica next. Facebook Adventure Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, and that starts with pretty much all my stuff. Some of them go into Instagram for all the youngins out there. <laughs> I'm still old, man. I'm 44. I know. Or adventureheron.com or rowingmyboat.com for the philanthropy. But yeah, man. Thanks for helping me, dude. No worries. Good luck with it all. Yeah, man. It's good to talk to someone who knows what the heck they're doing, man. Your age and crossing that many oceans, man. It's like, you know what I'm about to go into. I'm kind of glad I don't. But I'm listening to everything you guys say. Just gotta row, right? It's harder than I thought it would be to do this for like 16 hours a day being wet with seawater. The blisters that you must get, I can't stop thinking about it because you're just like constantly moving. Have you tried to steer yet? Oh yeah, I forgot to steer. Yeah. As soon as we got back, I went to turn the engine over because, you know, it's been a little while since we haven't run it and sure enough, it didn't start. I know what the problem is because you can hear the starter motor turning over, but it's not like, it's not engaging, which means I've got to take the starter motor off to free it. That doesn't look too good to me. You can see that this is just like totally rusty. This little cog thing is supposed to shoot out and engage with the flywheel, but no wonder it's not moving because that is like super rusty. The guys from the yard have kindly let me borrow a vice. We can take this apart and get it moving. Right now we can take this housing off. I've never actually done this before. 
I just literally watched a YouTube video like 15 minutes ago and it seems pretty straightforward so This is basically what was seized and this is the reason why we can get the engine to, to turn over. I'm going to use these cables to test whether it's working or not. From the battery, we have obviously the negative and the positive. And then you can ground the starter motor like that straight to the battery and then clip this on the positive terminal back here. And then what should happen when I get the screwdriver? See how this little thing swings out? along this piston. That was what was stuck. The start motor is back in. Everything's come together. This is the moment of truth. Woo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> what a great sound. The engine fired up just in time to move Elix around to the crane. It had been two years since I'd last seen her out of the water and I'd almost forgotten about those bulging Sparkman Stevens lines. The blanket of barnacles that had accumulated on Elix's hull was impressive and there was something very satisfying about watching them get scraped off again. With the help of the Marina Chiapas team, Elix was lifted safely to a new spot in the yard. There was a switch from cruising mode to boatyard mode. We weren't allowed to sleep on board in the yard, so I had one afternoon to pack everything up and say goodbye to Elixir for the next four months. We're out of the water now, finally, which feels really good. What do you think about this location? That's nice. It's pretty good. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, to be honest. Really? Why? <laughs> I'm worried about the winds knocking the boat over. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to leave today. I just need to do the last few bits of like preparing to leave Elixir for three months or maybe more, maybe less. I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom of the boat so that if she fills up with rainwater, there's somewhere for it to leak. The swans are actually designed with a little bung thing down here. I glassed over it with epoxy because we were putting the boat back in the water and I couldn't find the plug for it, so, but I'm going to open it up again. Next step is to run the engine through with fresh water and to do this, I'm going to put the hose straight into the seawater strainer here because the last thing that we want is for all like the vapour from the salt water to seize the engine. And now we've got the engine running, you can see there's a little bit coming out the intake but the exhaust is chucking out a ton of fresh water. So this is going to be the last time I see Elixir for a little bit. There she is behind me, high and dry in Mexico. I guess it's a kind of emotional goodbye. It's raining and it was really f***ing hard getting down the ladder with all of our bags. But yeah, goodbye. So the last 48 hours have been kind of crazy and I think I should talk about this experience while it's still fresh in my mind because it was a big one. We had just left Elixir. She was all laid up, ready to go. I had all my bags packed. 45 minutes into the bus journey, we passed one of the immigration stops. The lady really didn't like my passport. Um, she took it off the bus, came back on again and said, and told me to grab my bags because she said that my details weren't in the system and that all my visa and stamp was fake. As soon as I got off the bus, they threw me in the cage in the back of the van and left Lily on the side of the road by herself. Like super hot mosquitoes everywhere. They wouldn't let me talk. They wouldn't let me do anything. They were just treating me like I was criminal. After a little bit, they'd, they'd take me away and Lily gets on a bus to Tuxla. Lily's fine. And we left the road where they picked me up. A group of Venezuelans got in. We instantly started chatting and they, I could tell that they were cool and friendly and they were nice guys and um, I let them use the hotspot on my phone which I think was a big thing because then we like straight away we became friends. We drive for like 45 minutes to an immigration jail basically. It's like a big prison for illegal immigrants and the prison guards are just like well what are you doing here with all this stuff? Like I had two big bags, they went through it all, took all of my shoelaces and things and everything that I could use as a weapon and took my phone and my money and put it all in a safe, completely strip searched me, took everything, and opened the door, threw me in with like, in the room with like hundreds of people 
it was instantly chaos, instantly really, really intense. I gave me a little slip to get the prison food. And then that was it, I was in. And then I spent 24 hours in there. The night was kind of hard, you know, like you, they give you a mattress and then you, we were walking, I was walking around with my group of Venezuelan friends. Thank God I had th those guys as friends because they were like, I was hanging out with them. No one could really bother me. If I was just like the only gringo in that place, hanging out by myself, I think it could have been quite difficult. I reckon there was like 13 or 14 of us in about eight beds, so a lot of us had to sleep on the floor. These two Cuban guys had to share a mattress. So I'm like sleeping on the floor on this mattress, like it's like a plasticky mattress, no pillow or anything, and it's really hot in there, and I'm sleeping in like just my jeans and trying to put my T-shirt over my eyes because they leave the lights on all night, sweating, and then I woke up in this puddle of sweat. Oh, it wasn't very nice. I mean, as soon as I arrived, one of the Venezuelan guys gave me a toothbrush and started sh sharpening it on the floor and he said, you're gonna wanna do this because there's a lot of fights, like someone might come in the night and steal your ID, which is the worst thing that I could think of because I had my UK passport with an American visa. So yeah, I was kind of worried about that. Um, and yeah, but just thankfully the Venezuelans were super cool, like really good to me. And um, yeah, if I didn't make friends with them, I think it would have been a totally different experience. The next day we woke up and we just spent all day hanging out in the courtyard area outside. People are fighting all the time. I met a lot of people and they all told me their stories. Like the Venezuelan guys, they'd walked from Colombia to Panama through the Darien Gap, which is really crazy. It's like four days of thick jungle. And they told me that from their group of 200 people that did it, 40 never made it through the jungle, which I think is crazy. And I mean, no one's ever gonna hear about that because it's such a like crazy hostile place. The guys from West Africa, they had come across the Atlantic to like Guyana and then and then managed to cross all the borders up to Colombia and then same thing, walked through the Darien Gap and then they'd come up all the way to Mexico. They all had crazy stories. And it was actually a really educational, humbling experience to hear it all. Now I'm trying to catch my flight to the UK, which I like very, very nearly missed, but I think I might just be able to make it. It was a crazy experience, to be honest, and I still haven't processed it, because as soon as I left, I just hopped on a bus and I've been traveling ever since. And I don't think I will have time to really think about it until I get back to the UK, but um, yeah, that's basically what happened. 24 hours in a Mexican jail cell with a group of Venezuelans who actually became really good friends and I have a lot of respect for those guys because um, yeah if they didn't sort of let me into their group I would have had a totally different experience. Thanks for watching another update from Elixir's Voyage around the world please remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and also if you'd like to support the production of these videos we have a Patreon page which has some exclusive Elixir content there as well and yeah there's still a load more stuff to come from Mexico and the Pacific as well which I'm really excited to share with you. So yeah, see you next time.